All right, Yakota. We, uh, we are tying flies for the competition that Yakota's about to host tonight, but Cooper would like to introduce tonight's vlog. Here you go, Blake. All right, tonight we're, uh, we're tying flies for the Yakota tins. Got that going. And we got, uh, we also have a leader test going on. If you guys aren't familiar with these, Cool little tins that Yakota is now selling. It's got like different insides. This is just has like a slit foam area. Perfect like pocket size uh, river tins. And then this is the other tin. It's got a kind of a Velcro, like one of those catchy materials on one side and then this, the slit foam on the other side. So we're gonna fill these tins and then Yakota is going to have a competition and give away their tins with our flies. So, and we're gonna tie all of them tonight. Um, we are doing a high-tech tippet test where we have a tippet that we have, uh, well, basically we're checking this out, considering purchasing this for our own sale. And then we have a couple of other popular brands that we are testing it against. So I've got a scale set up. We're going to use a fly no rod, so we actually, you know, we're going to bend the rod like you're in real fishing situation. Hook on, a couple feet, pulling down, and when this line breaks, the scale's going to read the mark where the line broke at. So, we'll get a feeling for which is the stronger tippet. We'll do this several times with each, each one, and um, actually probably try a couple of different knots along the way. So, we'll let you know what the results are. All right, this is fly project, tip of test. So basically I'm just pinching off and pulling against the scale. And we're gonna see where she breaks. Get a pretty good load on I'm actually really impressed. Oh, what? Yeah. Which one is that? This is, this is, uh, this is the fly project source potential yeah. right here. That, that was pretty, pretty solid. Let's see where we're at. Are you just acting or is that really? No, that was, that was for real. So we got five pounds. What? Five. You always tie it exactly the same. Whenever you tie a clinch knot, you might have five turns. Sometimes one slips off, you end up with four. You might do six. Not as consistent. The double davy, when you tie it, you know you've got the exact same knot. So I figure if I keep tying that on all tippets, we'll have the most consistency in terms of uh, you know, where they're gonna break. Do you actually use the double navy knot like when you're fishing? Yeah, it's become my favorite knot for dry flies because it's real small profile knot. So I'm going to uh, try another brand and see where we, where she ends up here. <laughs> actually broke the tip of ring. Can you uh, recap what just happened? For well, the so I've got... <laughs> I've got 4X up here, and this is our 5X that we're looking at sourcing. And as you can see, the 4X broke. There's the tippet ring, 4X, 5X. It broke up here. So, huh. Very interesting. All right, so this is test number two. I've retied the tippet ring from my leader, which is at least 4X, onto the 5X. So far, we know that it's already stressed out at five pounds, and we're gonna see if it will go any farther on this next round. No way. Yeah. That was a pretty solid pull for a 5X tip. <laughs> five and a half. Of the primary Tippet brand that we uh, we all use. So now we'll have to test that one to see where it goes. Oh, that one. That could be any brand. That could be any brand that we yeah, all use. Yeah, whichever one we use. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got some uh, flies going on over here. What do we got going? We'll on? give you. We'll give you a double hit. bunny pike flies. You can't know what this one is. 
else we got going on over here? All right, we're tying the party on top caddis. So we're mixing the olive dry fly dubbing and the squirrel dubbing for the underbody. It's probably hard to see on that lens, but. I've never fished a caddis once in my life. Wow. Only street. Because you only cart fish. Only street. Only street. What's um, Austin time over you there? Can't, honestly, I don't even want to tell you. That's a carpy gray and brown. Let's see if you so Austin says we will be lucky to find out what that is. If they're lucky if enough to. If Yakota really is having a contest. Yeah. If what? What if Yakota is not really having a contest? What if, they, what if they just want a bunch of our flies? Yeah. <laughs> conspiracy theory. Insert conspiracy theory, theory music here. There is no contest. Time out for another test. Getting ready, yep. Hatch wants to be in the game. You can have none of this. Hatch. How do you feel about the, the giveaway? Tell us how you feel. Hatch. Hatch, did it. Hatch. How do you feel about the giveaway? We'll not mention the name, but it's not Cortland, Climax, <laughs> Stonefo. Maximum. Or, are you wrong? Yeah. Okay. You know, go, go look at the scale, make sure you see that it's zeroed out. Got another premium brand of 5X tippet here. Tied on to a hook. And then we've got a double baby knot on the hook and then also to a tippet ring off the leader. So we're gonna pull until it breaks and see where the scale reads. Ooh, that was actually kind of easy. Ooh. As you guys can see, we are not organized enough to fake this contest. <laughs> 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 Uh, good God, that wasn't even. Well, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It was three and a half pounds. Maybe three and three quarters. Is this for real right now? Is this for real? <laughs> that was real. That was real. Yeah. That's crazy. This is real shit. Not fake. It, with the this got five point five. Right. This got three point five. Oh my God. And now my guess is I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna guess this is not going more than four and a half, but we'll see. I'm gonna just take a little brown water here and get psyched up for the big pole. Okay, here we go. Clamping, pulling, where's our breakage gonna be? <laughs> Ooh. I'm not impressed. Four and a half. You Four called half. it. I called it actually. That was our stuff? No. no. Ours was five and a half. That was a oh, premium. Yeah. That was a premium fly fishing brand. About that. That's not Cortland, Climax, Stone Four and a half, three and a half. <laughs> now your thing's gonna win the Cool hat, man. Thanks, bro. Who's gonna win that? You can just steal that out of the box. I think they sent it to us for us to wear. <laughs> um, of course, the Fly Project Tippet will win. <laughs> it's not even a question. <laughs> All right, Nathan, what are you tying? I'm tying double bunny pike flies. In the black and orange. Oh, yeah, there you moved your hand. That's what I wanted. That looks saucy. All right, uh, Austin, are you ready to tell us what you're trying yet? Oh, yeah, it's just the old Carpe Cray, the simplest, most deadly pattern there probably is out there on the market now. That's what it is. Wow, that's a So. I have some fly wars with you. Oh, no. Here's the interesting thing. Though, like, so the one we're testing right now is the one we thought was going to be better because it's made in a Japanese factory, which, you know, is fairly well known for high quality, right? Yeah, four pounds. That, that ain't cutting it for four X. Not even close. You look actually angry. I, I'm, I'm disappointed.
catch. Stop breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop breathing. I'm actually finish, I'm actually finishing double bunnies because boss said I couldn't video. Boss <laughs> said He's I gonna bring out the steam whistle. <laughs> I think it's approaching like 115 degrees, hot. like 99% humidity. Uh, conditions are unbearable. But I'm hysterical. <laughs> we're not allowed to. We're not allowed to slow down. <laughs> that was funny. That was fun. Don't do that. That was a good time. Cooper, tell us about the flyer time. I'm trying the crazy goose. And what do you know about it? I don't know the history. Someone else needs to. Well, I brought a book down for you. To read to everybody. Where's it at? Ready. This is oh. called Flies of the Northwest from the Inland Empire Fly Fishing Club. Sounds legit. Yeah. Um, open to page 12. Page 12? Yeah. That fish is gonna die. This is not keep them wet. It's old. It's an old fish. Be careful. That was back in the day of keep them in the creel. <laughs> yellow bodied grayback. So they called for some reason they called it the yellow bodied grayback, but that's that's obviously not that's not right. It's the crazy goof. So looks wrong, but you can see the image is similar to what you're talking. About. So, why don't you go ahead and read that? I just can't see. I know you don't want to. You can read the back box at the same time. You point. wanted to be. <laughs> You're really good at what you do. Uh, so, this fly for the data, it says it was created about 1946 by an unknown Bozeman, Montana amateur tire for the Gallatin River. And it works best when the hoppers are up. That's all it says about it. I don't know what else you want me to read. Beautiful. Go Sam, what's your beautiful? Beautiful. Just to make story. That was wonderful. Well, we learned, me and Paul learned to tie the crazy goof from Bob Gruel on the Smith River. It's always been like people coming into the fly shop asking for the crazy goof. Do people still come in and ask for that? Oh yeah. And then now I go, come here, let me show you the updated version. And they're like, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Actually, we wrote we wrote a blog about it. I will link the blog um, in the comment section in case you're interested about the crazy goof. If you want to know any more than Cooper just That's explained to us. Uh, okay, Fred. Yes. So you said you've seen Sasquatch? No, I did not say I've seen him. I said I had a Sasquatch encounter. It's in the middle uh, of March. Sounds like a lot of people. That well, let, let me let me explain, and, and you can judge for yourself. So the the incident that I'm gonna basically tell the story on happened long ago in the Upper Midwest, on the shore of Boulder Lake in northern Wisconsin. I grew up there as a kid, and when I wasn't engaged in schooling or other crap that you know you're supposed to do. I was usually fishing or playing along the lake shore, as you can imagine. So on this particular day, fishing was a little slow. I was just rolling rocks, grabbing crayfish, doing crayfish leech fights, where you take two crayfish and you put a leech in between them and you watch them battle it, which is kind of cool. Um, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, so I'm sitting there and all of a sudden, I mean it's it's dead quiet. There's like no sound. There's no people around me. Um, all of a sudden, this giant boulder, I mean like this big, comes whizzing out of the Norway pines up the bluff over my head and crashes into the water in front of me in the lake. And I mean, I'm talking a rock this big. You couldn't even lift that rock, let alone throw it. And it, it literally traveled more than 100 feet from the woods over my head into the lake. So what, do you think he was trying to kill you or something? Uh, well, no, I think he was just trying to tell me, trying to scare me, trying to move me away. And, I, and it happened three times. 
So like the first rock whizzes over my head and there's like this giant explosion. And you know, your first thought is, you know, somebody's trying to like, oh look, a fish jump, but it's this big. I mean, so the first one went over my head and it goes kaboosh, and I was like, what the heck? You know, I turn around and as I turned around, I saw the next rock come out of the trees and go over my head into the lake. And at that point I was freaked, as you can imagine. And so, but I, I got nowhere to go. I mean, I can run back and forth in the lake shore, but there's nowhere to go. And, I mean, I, I about started swimming and the third rock came over my head, hit the water. And I mean, I just froze. I just sat there for like half an hour, didn't do nothing. Um, and then it was, that was it. That was the whole thing. So, I, so I'm like, well, I gotta go find out if there's Bigfoot tracks. So I went up the hill to where the rocks had come from. And it's, it's so like- at this a, point you already assumed it was Bigfoot. I had no other explanation. I'm like, it's gotta be I, something giant. I mean, a human would not have been able to lift and throw those, I mean, maybe lift them, but not hurl them. But isn't he from the Northwest? Like what was he doing in Wisconsin? There are, if you, if you look at Bigfoot history and you look at the sightings, there's a smaller number, but there's definitely sightings documented from the Midwest. Oh yeah. Yeah, so yeah, Austin knows. <clears throat> Michigan, Wisconsin, I mean, there's forested, you know, yeah, no, country up there. So anyway, I, I go up the bluff and the, the problem was it's like the forest there, it's this beautiful Norway and white pines and it's all spongy, real soft needles and stuff. And there were no impressions, but I walked a little farther up and I found where the rocks had been ripped from the soil. And there was like three big depressions where the rocks had been hauled out of the ground. And you know, it was kind of trampled around. That's what I got. I mean, I got no other explanation than I got squashed. Squash tried to scare the hell out of me. Hmm. I was 14 years old. And then I did a book report on Bigfoot. And all the kids thought I was a nerd, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was, you know, that, I mean, that was a legit story. I honestly, I got nothing as far as an explanation. Didn't see him, but I'm, I'm calling that's a squash story right there. And uh, that's why, you know, in my bio, I say I had an experience with Bigfoot. Can you believe it? Again, I got nothing. I got no, I mean, unless it was like, you know, Andre the Giant or. Do you believe in Bigfoot? <laughs> yes. Austin, do you believe in him? Oh yeah, for sure. He's out there. Like, I don't know if I guess if I had been with Fred that day, I might believe. <laughs> Nathan, that was, that was I think thing. it's definitely a possibility. Mm -hmm. Just some undiscovered, super smart thing that exists yeah. that Throws humans rocks. aren't smart enough to like catch or understand. Covers his tracks <laughs> really well or whatever. I believe it's guess Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. But there's one that lives in the What's that black man? Some skeptical. Sort of lake Very skeptical. I've never heard Nathan of that. Nathan said you do. No. I wouldn't be surprised if Nathan doesn't. You get scared pretty easy. That doesn't mean I believe in Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> I believe in scary things that are real. You guys mad at each other right now? Or? No. no. Like so what? Cooper. Cooper's just lying just straight to the camera. We're just having a disagreement. Scary things that are real, like what? <laughs> Michigan wolf thing. <laughs> oh, I know Cooper scares snakes. Wait, it? Yeah, snakes are real. It. You believe in it? <laughs> yeah. There's a clown. Cooper doesn't take shower. showers alone. <laughs> he scares the drain pipes. <laughs> so you could have sent us this. Oh, I shouldn't have his address on there. Put it on the back. <laughs> Sorry, Jason. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. Anyways, you could have sent us this uh, envelope. We're going to ship. Both tins, we got them stuffed full of a bunch of patterns. Fred tied his flash and grabs in there. Austin tied carpet craze. We have Ode to the Double Bunnies from Cooper and Crazy Goofs and the uh, Airheads. Lots of stuff. So they're about as they're stuffed full. So follow uh, Yokota Supply if you want to win this. You started the wall. You got, got it. Come Take on, her man. home. Farmer. We got we we achieved a lot tonight. We Good got job. uh tested out some lines, tied some flies, and that was our that was our goal tonight. Can you thank everybody for watching? Yeah, thanks for tuning in guys. Check in next time and see what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you uh like and follow the fly project. Yeah, like and follow the hype the fly project. Follow us on IG.
because that starts popping. Yeah, that's, our, that's our Instagram now. Fly Project USA, of course. Yeah, Fly Project USA. Okay. Right. I think so. Bye. Bye now. Bye now. <laughs> <laughs> Yakoda. Okay, say goodbye to everybody. Hi now. Say goodnight. Good night. Sleep tight. <laughs> <laughs>